Living in a town where all the schools rank high, you can let your child play on the front lawn because the neighborhood is just as safe, and most importantly, it's located in the suburbs. You are not a city dweller, or you're just really tired of the hustle and bustle of the city. In this video, we're about to cover the top five areas around us, Buffalo area, that meet that criteria exclusively. What's going on, you guys? I hope all is well. As always, my name is Devonta Davis. I'm here with my co-host, Matthew Kabick, and we are about to talk about the top areas for families around the suburbs of the Buffalo area. Now, this is gonna be a little different than what we're used to because we're gonna be taking data from three top online sources. Niche.com, of course, yeah, I know that's my go-to, Movado, and Home Snacks, with a touch of Buffalonianism. That's right. You know, because we're right. born and bred here, so we gotta throw our little two cents, here, uh, two cents in there without pushing you guys anywhere. So, as always, if you guys are moving up here, you already know, make sure you give us a call, and we're about to get right into number one right away. One of the best things about Buffalo as two lifelong Buffalonians is the fact that each township has its own identity. It has its own feel. It has its sure. own look. Starting us off at number one is Williamsville. I know, I know. Number one on almost every list, whether yeah. it's schools, sports, it doesn't matter. Williamsville always seems to be up there on the top of the chart. Like people's perfect place or something, you know? That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, whether it's uh, the location or the amenities, Williamsville is just awesome. As I had mentioned, it always is topping the list. That doesn't exclude schools. Schools in Williamsville, whether you're in North, South, Amherst, it really doesn't matter. All of the schools are fantastic. Every year they're ranking at the top of the list or if not in the top three or the top five. It's just without question. So you can know if school education is important to you for your kids or your soon to be kids, you're gonna be rest assured that they're gonna be getting a good education within those school districts. Fun fact, Rob Gronkowski, yes, mm -hmm. the Rob yeah. Gronkowski the actually uh, mm -hmm. is from Buffalo yep. and he went to Williamsville North. Yep. The second great thing about Williamsville is its walkability. For sure. There's yeah. only a handful of truly walkable neighborhoods in the suburbs of Western New York and yeah. Williamsville is one of them. Yeah, all day. All day. Now, whether it's yeah. going to the library, walking your dog, going to Glen Falls, going to restaurants, it really doesn't matter. It's all right there. So if you want to leave the kids at home, toss on a movie and say, hey, mom and dad are going out to eat, you're going to be able to do that. If you want to take the kids for a walk or even send them out to take the kids for a walk, yep, you can you rest assured that they're going to be okay. There's sidewalks. It's a very friendly neighborhood that you're able to walk and get out and enjoy the outdoors. Yeah. One thing that is a drawback when it comes to the Williamsville area is going to be the old or the age of the homes, right? They're gonna range between anywhere from about 1935 to about 1945. You're gonna get your three bedroom, two bath, right around 1900 square feet. But over the last 12 months, this has shot up a little bit to about 370,000, which is quite a bit, again, from the Buffalo area, like you guys watched the last video, the average in Buffalo right now, 2024, is only 215 inside the city. Here's three examples for you. And these are all inside the Williamsville South School District. Because when you talk about Williamsville off Main Street, that's gonna be that designated school district. 131 Cadman, right? End up selling for 315. Taxes on that was 5,400. School tax alone was 25. 4, uh, 48 Hirschfield, and I actually seen this one. This house was beautiful. 385,000 selling price. Taxes were $8,322. 3,900 of that were going straight to school. Lastly, uh, 27 uh, Pasadena, 415, taxes 67. Again, half of that, 3,300, were going straight to the schools. So, yes, you will definitely get your money's worth in Williamsville, but again, you're gonna pay a little bit. Now, let's get right into Snyder. Now, that brings us to number two on our list, and that is Eggertsville and Snyder. Now, it's kind of a toss up because those are technically right next to each other. And to be honest, again, I kind of think that Snyder, Eggertsville, Williamsville, they kind of all blend together. Yeah, and true. that brings me yeah. to the point where mm -hmm. Snyder and Eggertsville are only three miles down the road from Williamsville. Mm -hmm. So while you're not walking there, hop in the car, drive like three to five minutes, and mm -hmm. you're in Williamsville in the heart of the live music, the hustle and bustle of everything that that village has to offer. Yeah. Okay, now 
it really does provide you a true suburban vibe there okay there's sidewalks there's mature trees there's beautiful architecture yeah. between tudor style colonial style uh even little hints of gothic style as yeah. well it's true it's true. true yeah, yeah it's true because yeah. they've got park country club right yep. down the road yep. which yeah. is super inspired is by that guy yeah. and it is beautiful yeah. yep. absolutely beautiful yep. if you are working downtown you're only 18 to 20 minutes from downtown anyway yep. So don't worry about your morning commute. Snyder, Eggertsville, Williamsville, it's really convenient just to shoot right downtown and be to work in the morning. And the other thing about it is the two main intersections are Harlem and Main Street. So it's super easy in terms of accessibility to get to the main routes and just go to wherever it is that you need to go. And we've been receiving a ton of calls, right? From people trying to move or coming up here to work at UB South, right? UB South is right off Main Street as well. It seems like everything off Main Street right now, but UB South is directly going straight into the city, right off Main Street. You're talking about an eight minute drive to work. If you really adventurous, you can hop on a bike and get there in 20 minutes, right? It's a straight shot and you got bike lanes on main street even though you're down the street like matt said from williamsville right you're only three miles away but it is a totally different school district so instead of going to williamsville south you're going to be going to amherst central high school which honestly is a good thing because the demographics are a lot more diverse inside of amherst high school then you're talking about williamsville but i know for a lot of you guys that you know we've been getting calls from that's important to you so you may want to think about that and it doesn't drop off when you're talking about high no, school and no, statistics no. It's still a eight out of 10 or even US News again has them rated as a 90 instead of a 95 out of 100. So I think on something I saw recently too, they were like at the top. Yeah, right? like yeah. it's up there. Yeah, it's, it is definitely up there. Especially sports like yeah. Amherst High School boys, men's basketball team has always been good, even when we were in high school. Yeah, so, yep. I mean, they don't fall off their football team as well, too. It doesn't fall off when you're talking about school education and things like that. There's about 152 homes sold in Snyder as of the last kind of 12 months, you are looking at an average of about 345. Let's swing on down to the Southern tier a little bit. And this is the village and town of Aurora. This is gonna be one of the, this is to me personally, this is probably one of the best walkable places in or on this list, right? There's only three of them. We talked about two of them. We got one more to go, but this East Aurora is a dope, quaint, small, tight little town. Yeah. Main Street has everything. I'm talking about mom and pop shops. You have a lot of local cafes and breweries and brunches and tacos. Like, it's so much to do on Main Street. And historically, I mean, East Aurora, if you guys know Roy Croft, the painter, all that, is very, very artsy. It's very, very vibrant. Here's the kicker. There's always one. You are a lot further from the rest of the suburbs. Because you're in a southern tier, A, you're probably gonna get hit with a little more snow than you like. <laughs> B, you are about 30 to about 35 minutes from downtown. So that can play a factor, especially again, you're talking about hopping on a 400. Yes, the speed limit is 65, but people don't know how to drive that first snowfall or when the, when the weather starts to get bad. And it's only two lanes, yeah. okay? So True. if you get behind someone that. slow oh and they don't gosh. move over, yeah. forget it. Yep, forget you it. You won't be there all that, that yeah. 30 minutes you're turning into 45 very quickly so outside of the village it can get rural very quick yeah, okay sure. so you yeah. know we're talking like not farm but we're talking about like very very rural mm -hmm. now one of the good things about that though is that you're getting about an acre right around an acre per home sold yeah. that is only outside of the village yeah. as you get closer and definitely inside of the village you're definitely not going to be getting uh, an acre yeah. of land and if for some reason you are I I don't even think there are acre lots in the yeah, village not at all no yeah. but if you're yeah. getting anything substantial you are going to be paying for it yeah for sure now the other thing about small town living is small town drama mm. and you know <laughs> what i'm talking about if you're from a small yeah. town the truth of the matter is there is only one high school east aurora high mm -hmm. that serves the entire community there so with that it's only a matter of time before everyone knows who you are knows who you're kids are knows what you do for a living they just know everything about you yeah, your pockets man Watch yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's right yeah. that's right out of the 37 homes that sold over the last 12 months and i just want to point that out really quick 
only 37 homes sold in the last 12 months. Now, on one hand, that's a good thing. And the reason why is because that shows that people who live in East Aurora love East Aurora and they don't leave East Aurora, okay? Now, on the downside, it means that when homes do become available, they are super competitive. Yes. And it is usually yes. a multiple offer situation, especially in today's market. Uh, and so you really need someone helping you that has the ability to make your offers stand out. The yeah. average sale is 412,000 within the village. Mm -hmm. Now, the town as a whole had a sales price average of $453,000 yeah. in the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. Now, I do want to point out one more time that that is an average. So that means that some sold higher and some sold low, lower. We sold a couple last year um, inside of Easter Royal, one for half a million, but they got five acres of land. That's right. So it's That's like, right. it, it does wait, especially when you're talking about the town compared to the village. You may, you may be a little tighter in a village like Matt was saying, but if you guys are not afraid to be eight, 10 minutes away from the town, I mean, eight, 10 minutes away from the village, I would think about the town of Aurora, especially if you guys don't want no neighbors and you want that elbow room. So the fourth on the list is Kenmore. Now it is super compact and yeah. tight knit. And what I mean walkable, I'm pretty sure almost every single road in Kenmore has a sidewalk. Yeah. What I don't necessarily mean, though it has it on Elmwood in Delaware, is restaurants, amenities, coffee shops. It certainly does have it, mm -hmm. uh, but only to a certain extent, because yeah. once you start getting you know, too far north and south, you're no longer in Kenmore. Now, Kenmore is just located outside uh, the northern city limits. So if you're not careful and if you don't know any better, you might think you're in North Buffalo. Now, Kenmore does have a lot of older homes. I think it's actually the oldest community yep. in Western New yep. York. It's the first suburb. It's the first suburb. It's the yep. first suburb. And so with that being said, uh, it comes with an older housing stock. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. And also there's things that you need uh, that you otherwise wouldn't know if you don't know the Kenmore area. And that's why, you know, where Devante and I are able to help you because we fortunately do know the area. And with that being said, basements, yeah. you need to know about wet and damp basements, because what we wouldn't want is for you to fall in love with Kenmore and then all of a sudden wind up with a $30,000 repair bill because you've got a wet uh, basement. Mm -hmm. You don't want that. Believe me, you don't want that. Uh, buying a home is stressful and expensive enough. Mm -hmm. The last thing you want is doing foundation work. Yeah. You just don't want that. And you'll notice um, a lot of people in Kenmore, because it was Buffalo's first suburb and all that good stuff, you'll notice a lot of people in Kenmore stay for 10, 15, 20 years. But it does grant an opportunity for a lot of first time home buyers, right? Like Matt was saying, you can get in there. The good part is that you know, unfortunately, people get older. People can't maintain their home the way they used to, so they end up selling, right? You have a lot of homes sold. 70% of people in Kenmore own their homes, which is amazing. So for that next first time home buyer, you'll have the opportunity to not own, but then you could put your own flavor on it. You can come in, buy grandma's home and you know and put in that brand new vanity or kitchen or bathroom and make it your own and bring in that 1930 into 2024 all day long which honestly it's going to kind of become a little bit like williamsville because yeah, williamsville exactly. is the after yep. effect yep. of those renovated older homes yep very true very even true. out of 144 homes sold in the last 12 months or so you're still looking at an average of only 231 when you're talking about the housing stock too, you're talking about driveways, right? It is the first suburb of Buffalo, so you're not going to have the, you know, they were still driving T Model 4s back it's then. Tight. Like it's, it's tight. It's, it's, you may be able to pull up, but only past your front porch. Like, you're not going to pull all the way Well, all of Kenmore is only 15 blocks. Right. So right. it's tight they, to begin yeah, with. All yeah. day. All day. Now, as Devante mentioned, the last one on our list is going to be Clarence. Yeah. Now, Clarence is interesting because it's both suburbs, but also a little bit of country mm -hmm. as well. If I had to split it up, I'd say probably like 60, 40, suburbs to country as you start getting a little bit further north more towards like the clarence center area uh it gets a little bit more country rural i would say yeah. now the vibe of clarence is mostly going to be white collar a lot of buffalo's prominent figures uh live in in clarence whether it's doctors lawyers professional athletes 
Um, they live in Clarence and it tends in those areas to get pretty expensive, okay? Now Clarence is one of those areas where it really doesn't have a lot of structured architecture. You're gonna have a 3,500 square foot colonial or a, or a 5,000 square foot new build yeah. across the street from a 1,500 square foot ranch. Mm -hmm. It's just the way that it is. There's really no rhyme or reason. Now you might get a little bit more consistency once you start going into some of these developments like Spalding Green or Spalding Lake or you know any other development in the Clarence area for that matter. One of the benefits of Clarence as well is obviously the schools, but in terms of your housing search in this current market, uh, there's a lot of newer developments yeah. because of the land that are going in in Clarence. Yeah. You know, that might give you the opportunity to, to secure a house with a little bit less competition uh, than you're gonna find in other parts of Western New York. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about what your commute looks like uh, coming from Clarence. To the city, about 30, 35 minutes, especially if you're considering traffic, then that starts to go up. Yeah. Now, here's what I would certainly not recommend. If you work in the South Towns and you're gonna be coming from Clarence Center, yeah. forget it. Yeah. Don't even <laughs> don't even buy. I mean, yep. really, like really consider looking somewhere like Lancaster, yeah. Orchard Park. Somewhere in the middle. Somewhere, somewhere in the middle for you guys. Somewhere yeah. in the middle, because yeah. you know, the the unfortunate part about that area is there is no easy access nope. to the throughways at all so you're taking back roads the whole way yeah and that's two-lane traffic you know if there's one little inconvenience mm -hmm. there's also depending on the, the route that I used to take, I actually used to live in Clarence, uh, the route that I used to take, there's two train tracks. Mm -hmm. So if you are if you catch a train, you're gonna be sitting there and your already 30, 40 minute commute mm -hmm. is going up even more. Yep, and that frustration is real. <laughs> that's true, that's that true. Frustration is real. Because there's no way around it. Not you know, you're sitting there. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can there's do. There's nothing you can do. Let's put a little bit of uh, practicality to this and talk numbers. The highest in Clarence is going to be like $2.4 million, yeah. okay? The lowest is going to be about $125,000. Now, let's draw a little bit of a comparison of what those two look yeah. like. $2.4 million, which you're going to discover oh. in Western New York, oh is gosh. going to be one step short of the Taj Mahal. Yeah. I mean, it is like <laughs> unbelievable, yeah. gigantic movie theater, swimming pool. I yep. mean, just insane, yeah. okay? Now, $125,000. 25,000, you might want to consider just knocking it down. I, yeah, Starting I, over. Yeah, so, <laughs> uh, but it's definitely yeah. going to need quite a bit of work. Yeah. So, you know, but if you can find that in between, it's about $536,000 is yep. the average, and that's going to give you four bedrooms and about two baths, yep. which is plenty of home. Yep. And it's about 2,700 square feet. So, I mean, that's a yeah. sizable house. That is Especially a good when it comes to Clarence. Now, what Clarence does make up in peace is quiet. You have no issues out there. Unfortunately, it lacks heavy in diversity. I mean, yeah. it's about a 98 to 2%. Yeah, if we're uh, talking scale 1 to 10, it's probably it's like a 1. A half. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's so, not good. But I mean, it's it's beautiful on Clarence. Don't get me wrong. I it's I love it. But again, outside that 20, 25 minutes outside of Buffalo or the center city of Buffalo, it's not going to be um, heavy diverse out there. But this is going to be or conclude our list on today. There's a lot of good things on here, right? There's a you know some walkability. Every single town, like Matt stated in the beginning, has their own identity. It's going to look different from Clarence to East Aurora to Williamsville to Amherst, south of Amherst. It, I mean, everywhere is going to have its own identity. So when you guys do come up here, let's take our time going through these different areas or talk on the phone prior to so we can, you know, be privy of to certain information that we need when you guys are moving up here. So as always, myself, Matt, we would love to help you guys move up to the Buffalo area. If you guys are relocating up here or you already in a Buffalo area looking to move around, make sure you guys give us a call, email, text. We'll hop on a Zoom call. We'll reverse engineer your entire plan. We'll get it done and we'll get you guys moved up here. All right. All right. All right. As always, we'll see you guys in the next one. See you the next one.